Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. My name is Andrew Wall. I'm the managing partner of CPA4IT, an accounting firm specializing in small businesses just like you. Um, our session today is going to be on maximizing the benefits of being self-employed and specifically on some of the key areas that you can write off. Our agenda for the today, our agenda for the day, we'll be talking about who we are, some tools that will help you save time in capturing all of these deductions, which is a necessity for being able to write them off or deduct them. Then we're gonna talk about how we can actually save money by maximizing deductions and introduce you to all the things that you should be aware of that you can deduct as a small business owner. And if you stick around right to the end, we've got a special offer just for you. And that's gonna be a significant savings on some of these tools that we recommend to help minimize the amount of time it actually takes to track and manage all these deductions. So without further ado, why don't we kick off? Um, we are a chartered accounting firm who specializes in small business owners just like yourself, as I said. Now, accountants aren't necessarily the boring people that you expect them to be. Uh, we do get excited, though, by some things that most people would actually find boring. Looking through the Income Tax Act, finding tax cases that will help us maximize deductions for our clients and helping them to maximize their net worth and minimize the amount of taxes that, that they pay really does give us a hire and excitement and a buzz. So yes, we're not necessarily as boring as you might think you are, but we do get excited by some of the less than thrilling things. And the things that you as a small business owner probably don't wanna spend your time researching. And we've got over 30 years specializing in small businesses just like you and helping them minimize the amount of taxes that they pay and giving them the peace of mind that their financial information is prepared and presented professionally and backing that up with tools like audit representation protection. We're lucky to have been recognized as one of the top 50 cloud accounting firms uh, in North America, and that's because we're a blend of the old and the new. Our firm was founded over 30 years ago in 1984 by my father, George Wall, which brings us tons of heritage and experience. People who have been with our firm uh, for decades who have that knowledge and that experience, but that has got the youth and vigor and passion for technology because technology really is disrupting the way accounting and bookkeeping is done. And there's some amazing tools that are really gonna simplify the process for you. I'm gonna give you some tips and tools on what they are. I'm also gonna give you some special discounts so you can get started with those tools right away. Um, we are one of the very few ISO 9001 registered firms. What that means is we have an external auditor who comes and looks at our systems and processes to make sure that we're following those systems and processes, but we're also constantly improving on those systems and processes uh, because to be a real firm of the future, you have to strive for constant and never ending improvement. Technology is shifting and changing all the time. And if we're not adapting and adopting this technology, then we're not doing our clients the service that they deserve. And that's one of the things I think that makes our firm excel is that we are this hybrid of a traditional firm with decades of experience, yet we're focused on technology. We're very modern in our practices and our approaches, and we're going to use the tools to make your life easier. And that's the bottom line of what we're here to do is we are here to give you financial peace of mind and reduce the stress and the headache involved with having to deal with filing your taxes. Number of the reasons that small business owners like you choose to work with us. Um, we do offer a free initial consultation so you can come in and learn a little bit more about us, have a walkthrough about what your specific situation is so we can help provide a really tailored solution that will help you optimize um, the benefits of a good accountant. And a good accountant really is gonna be a substantial benefit for you. Um, they are gonna far outweigh any costs that they do have by helping maximize tax planning, minimizing expenses, and help you optimize your total net worth. So as an accounting firm, we're looking at the whole package. Uh, how are we gonna optimize your net worth? What team of advisors do we need to bring in, whether that's financial planners, uh, lawyers, uh, insurance providers, to help optimize your personal net worth? One of the big things that people always tell me that they like about our firm is that we offer a turnkey solution. We have everything that you need from paralegal services, uh, introduction to financial planners, uh, insurance agents, as we mentioned before, uh, lawyers. We can bring in that whole team of advisors to really give you a complete 
turnkey solution. A couple of other key differentiators that we do that you won't find with other firms are things like our benchmarking analysis, which is a tool that allows us to compare your financial information against the average and the median in our database, which we've been keeping for over 30 years. This will help us to pinpoint opportunities for risk, uh, or sorry, opportunities for improvement when you're maybe below the average uh, and there's some opportunity to increase some of these deductions by just asking a few key questions and help drive out of you some of the expenses you may not realize that you can deduct. Uh, alternatively, it does identify those risks as well. So if you're substantially above the average in any one category, uh, there's a risk that CRA might red flag you the same way that we did because they use similar types of algorithms. Um, and if we're going to red flag you, let's make sure that we put the documentation in place so that we can keep those deductions. And along with that, and critical to that, is our audit representation protection. So that if you are audited, you know you've got the backup and the support of a knowledgeable financial pr professional who knows the language, who's dealt with CRA before, who's not intimidated by CRA, and help ensure that you keep those deductions that you're legitimately entitled to. Uh, but enough about us, let's get into why you're actually here with some time-saving tools, and then we'll jump into some financial saving tools and talk about specifically the deductions that you should be aware of as a small business owner that you can help use to maximize those write-offs. So when it comes to saving time, this really is important because time equals life. And it, therefore, if you're wasting your time, you're wasting your life. But if you can also master your time, you can master your life. And that's a famous quote from Alan Lakin, and I really think that this is true. And in this day and age of technology, there's a tremendous opportunity to master time and minimize the amount of effort that it goes into things like bookkeeping and financial planning and doing all this receipt capture, which is an important part of being an entrepreneur that used to be really time consuming and you know painful. And now it can be effortless and really easy to do. Um, specifically, I want to talk about, you know, capturing of receipts. In the old days, everyone used to put everything in a shoebox and hope that they kept receipts and hope that those receipts didn't fade. Uh, in the modern world, everything is done with this. All you need is your smartphone. It's got an amazing high quality camera built into it. You simply take a picture of your receipt and there's no more need to do any data entry. The um, information is stored securely in the cloud and you can pull expense data out of that really easily by pulling out a lot of reports. So what happens is when you take a picture of your receipt with this app, which is called Receipt Bank, and, and again, we've got a great special offer on Receipt Bank uh, that if you stick around to the end, I'll share with you. Um, and I'm telling you, it's gonna be really worthwhile to hang around for this special offer. But the tool Receipt Bank, snaps a picture of your transaction, it then converts it to OCR, which is optical character recognition, um, and that's readable data. So it can then take that information and do all kinds of things with it. It can put it into a financial um, uh, management tool like QuickBooks Online or Xero, or you can put it into Excel and create all the pivot tables that you could ever imagine. And you don't have to actually enter that information anymore. And when combined with a tool like QuickBooks Online, the amount of time savings is incredible. But the purpose of this tool, as much as the time savings are a big benefit, the real reason I think every small business owner needs to have this tool is for documentation purposes. If you want to go, or well, I'm sure you don't want to, but if you ever do go through an audit, the first thing that you're going to need to be able to de defend any deductions that you have is the proof that you've spent the money on that deduction. And unfortunately, a credit card or a bank card statement is not sufficient proof. It doesn't have any line item detail. It doesn't have GST numbers on it. So you can imagine if you walk into the, the Bay or Canadian Tire that you could buy cat items from all sorts of different expense categories. And how does the auditor know that you really did spend $1,000 on, uh, you know, automobile expense versus repairs and maintenance versus a TV versus a vacuum versus, you know, furniture, whatever the case might be. He needs to be able to see the line item detail to ensure that the item that you purchased is legitimately deductible. And with tools like Receipt Bank, you just simply snap a picture and it does it automatically. 
Plus there's some other added benefits like linking in online accounts like uh, Amazon, Best Buy, Rogers, Bell, where it will actually go and pull the re receipts and transactions. So you don't actually have to take a picture of it. It'll literally just go to your online account, pull that information, and again, do that OCRing and connect it and sync it to your financial management software. Um, and if none of that works, if you don't have a smartphone and you don't have it connected to an account, you can always forward an email to a special email account that you get with Receipt Bank. So literally all, all those stores that allow you to send a receipt directly to email, these can automatically go straight into your Receipt Bank account. You now have a permanent digital record uh, as long as you ever need to retrieve it and it's not gonna fade. Um, it's easy to find because it's searchable and sortable by date, by amount, by vendor, all this information that normally in the past you would have had to write down or put into a database or some way of capturing that data. It's all done for you automatically. And this is an amazing tool. It's called Receipt Bank. And we'll tell you a little bit more about that at the end of this session. The other tool that I want to introduce you to is, is a tool called QuickBooks Online uh, or even Xero. Um, we're big advocates for QuickBooks Online um, more so than Xero. Not that there's anything wrong with Xero. Um, but we're advocates for QuickBooks Online, quite frankly, because the pricing is substantial, substantially better for most small business owners. And in fact, we get a special wholesale discount um, that we can apply to any one of you guys. Uh, that gets us a very significant discount off the retail pricing that we can then pass on to you. Um, but what's so great about this tool is, again, the time savings that you get with it. So within QuickBooks Online, it's using a number of tools to substantially save you time. And that's primarily around the expense reporting side of it. Um, they've got a couple of different ways that they do that. One is by matching transactions. So if you have a transaction that you've created in QuickBooks Online, which might have been created by a tool like Receipt Bank, as we mentioned before, you took a picture of your receipt with your phone, it automatically flows into QuickBooks. QuickBooks goes through your bank statement and goes, aha, this matches that picture over there, connect them together and we're done. If it can't match, it will then use a rule. Um, and if you don't know what a business rule is, um, it's basically the ability to go into QuickBooks online and say, every time I spend more than $50 at Tim Hortons, I want it to be um, an advertising because I'm giving away $50 gift cards. Anytime I spend under $50, I want that to be meals and entertainment. And you can create those kind of rules, that kind of logic, and it will automatically process those rules if it doesn't find a specific match. Then if it doesn't, like if you haven't created a rule and it couldn't find a match, then it uses its own internal rules, which are all artificial intelligence driven. So it's learning from not only your past behavior, uh, but all the past behavior of the millions of QuickBooks Online users. Another reason I'm a big fan of QuickBooks Online over Zero is they do have a much larger North American user base than Zero. Again, Zero, I'm not trying to knock that tool. Uh, we just tend to lean a little bit more towards the green product than the blue product. Uh, but we're obviously happy to work with whatever uh, digital technology that you want to bring to the table. Uh, lastly, if it doesn't have a match, if it isn't a business rule that you've created. If QuickBooks doesn't have a rule for it already, it'll do an intelligent guess as to what it thinks is the most likely category. But all of this comes down to substantially reducing the amount of time it takes you to do your accounting and bookkeeping. Now you're just snapping pictures of receipts and going into your account and matching transactions or using business rules and selecting literally sometimes hundreds of transactions and processing them with one click of a mouse, knowing your information is accurate, it's complete, and it's up to date is amazing. So this technology, it's here today, it's really approachable, it's not very expensive. As I mentioned, we've got some wholesale discount pricing available for anyone who's interested in moving to QuickBooks Online. And as I said earlier, if you stick around to the end, we've got a special offer for Receipt Bank, only available to those people who make it all the way to the end of this session. So without further ado, let's, let's get into why you guys are here. How are we gonna actually save you money? What are the things that you can write off as a small business owner? And how are we going to, to maximize those deductions? Um, because 
this is all about your financial freedom, right? And the question isn't at what age are you going to retire? Um, it's at what income are you going to retire? And we can help drive a higher income for you by minimizing the amount of taxes that you pay. You know, here in Ontario, the highest tax rate on the personal tax side is over 53%. Now, every dollar that we're able to deduct as a business expense is a dollar that you will not pay either corporate tax or personal tax on. So the number one objective to help keeping more money in your pocket is to maximize those expense deductions. Now, what exactly can you write off? And this is, this is the hard part here. When we, when we sat down to try and put together an exhaustive webinar on all the things that you can write off. This is, this is virtually impossible for us to do um, because there really is no limit to what you can deduct. Um, there are some rules. Um, first of all, it can't be specifically disallowed by the Income Tax Act. Um, and the one thing is you would probably expect with the Income Tax Act being quite a, quite a lengthy document, you'd expect that to spell out all the things you can and you can't deduct. And the reality is there's actually not that many things that are specifically disallowed by the Income Tax Act. There are a few things like golf, um, uh, golf green fees, club memberships, uh, life insurance, and there's always some workarounds around life insurance as well. Um, you know, uh, there's a few categories that are specifically disallowed, but if they're not specifically disallowed, um, there's only two other criteria that you have to meet. One, it has to be reasonable, which by definition is subjective. What's reasonable to me, what's reasonable to you, what's reasonable to a CRA auditor um, could be vastly different, uh, which puts us into this awkward position of, well, is it, is it legitimate or not? We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. And, and if it is reasonable, then the only other criteria is that it has to be incurred with the intent of earning income in the future. And again, this is also vague and subjective. Um, and this leaves it vague and open to a lot of interpretation. And in fact, a lot of what accountants do is we look not only at the Income Tax Act, but we're looking at case law, interpretations by various judges along the way as to whether they think an expense is legitimate or not, and then making our own interpretations. Um, so the, the Income Tax Act does leave a lot of gray area. Um, and this is a tremendous opportunity for those of you that are looking to maximize deductions. And, and of course, as a professional firm, we are never going to encourage nor allow you to do anything illegal or fraudulent. But what we want to do is maximize those deductions, maximize those interpretations to help ensure you keep those deductions. Um, and so we look at case law and we look at the Income Tax Act to come up with interpretations and we'll lay out what we call a full option accounting, helping you to understand from aggressive to conservative and everything in between to help you decide where you want to fall on that spectrum. And of course, people do ebb and flow and you might want to be aggressive in one area and conservative in another. And that's your prerogative. These are your financial statements. We as your accounting firm are here to assist you and help prepare those financial statements and help you to understand, interpret, and maximize the Income Tax Act for your benefit. Now, why do most people miss out on the deductions that they're legitimately entitled to? And there are a couple of reasons. Um, first and foremost is, is lack of knowledge. They just simply are not aware of the things that they can deduct. And one of the tools that we use to combat this is our benchmarking analysis. And our benchmarking analysis is a quick visual way of identifying opportunities. Uh, we give you a graph that shows you how you compare against the average and the median, and you can see visually, am I below, am I above? And if you're below, then we're gonna start asking you some questions about you know, your lifestyle. Are you actually spending money on this? Are you aware that you can deduct that? And this helps to quickly identify all those opportunities that you might not be aware of. And if you've never been 
self-employed before, how are you going to know about all the deductions that you're legitimately entitled to? Even after this session, which is going to give you a really deep dive into some of the most common categories, it's not an exhaustive list. It's going to depend on your business and the money that you're spending and the deductions that you're legitimately entitled to are going to be specific to you. So our tools will help to pinpoint those along with knowledgeable accountants who've been in this industry for decades to help you maximize those deductions. The other reason people aren't uh, taking advantage of all the deductions that they're or write-offs that they're entitled to is because of poor record keeping. But that doesn't have to be the case anymore. With tools like QuickBooks Online and Receipt Bank, record keeping is simple, easy, and done really quickly. And again, we've got wholesale pricing on QuickBooks Online and a special offer on Receipt Bank if you stick through to the end. Lastly, the number one reason that people don't maximize deductions is a fear of Revenue Canada. They think CRA is going to deny something. They're not sure how CRA is going to interpret it, so they'd rather be more conservative on those deductions. And that's where our audit representation protection comes in. You know that when you work with us and we've prepared your financial statements and you're on one of our plans that includes audit representation protection, we'll represent you up until the third and final stages of appeals and there'll be no charge for any of the time that we spend. And that gives you the peace of mind to really uh, maximize those deductions and minimize the amount of taxes that you're gonna pay. So let's, let's walk through um, some specific things that you're going to be able to deduct as a small business owner. Now, as I, as I mentioned earlier, this is not an exhaustive list. Uh, this is meant to be an introduction to the core areas, uh, primarily built around service businesses. We're not gonna be talking about cost of goods sold, uh, inventory, any of those things that you might have if you're in the retail or wholesale business. Um, we're gonna talk about some of the things that we would expect to see in virtually every business. So first and foremost, any fees that you pay to us are going to be deductible. Um, so that's retainers for CPA for IT, monthly bills, anything that we're charging you for any of our bookkeeping services. Of course, the software and tools, if you're paying for any of those, um, those are gonna be included as well. Next, we're gonna have advertising expenses. Um, and this could be everything from traditional media, social media, to business cards, um, having someone work on PowerPoint slide decks, um, going out and doing uh, physical events, um, gifts that you might purchase for existing or potential clients. This is a great opportunity a lot of people aren't aware of that they can actually deduct gifts for clients potential as well as potential clients. So this is a tremendous opportunity to, again, maximize some deductions, a key area where people miss out on some deductions that they're legitimately entitled to. Uh, you might have sponsorships or business donations. Um, and then lastly, the number one area in advertising that's often missed out is when you do an event. Um, so most of the time people will put meals and entertainment under meals and entertainment or what we call business promotion. Um, and that's fine for, you know, taking one or two people out um, for a meal because uh, business promotion is a category that's 50% deductible. The government basically recognizes that you're getting a personal benefit and there's an add back on the tax return, which reduces the amount of um, write-off that you actually get to 50%. But advertising has no such write down on the write-off. Um, so you're getting 100% of the deduction. And if you're having an event, a large group of people, one of the criteria is that all your staff members must be invited. Uh, but if you're an owner manager type of business, that's pretty much met at every event that you have. Uh, of course, you know, the expression we have around here, pigs get fat, but hogs get slaughtered. So if you're having an event every week, uh, that's probably not going to meet the reasonableness um, clause. Um, so you want to make sure that, that, like I said, you're maximizing these deductions without getting a little bit too greedy. Uh, automobile expenses. This is a category that obviously most people are aware of that they can deduct. Um, there's a couple of different options. You can use the mileage method or you can use the actual method. Um, we keep track of both. And the reason we do that is because one method might be better than the other and you can switch back and forth um, from one year to the other uh, from mileage to actual. So you want to keep track of both um, to maximize those deductions. And one of the most important things here is that this is the number one most audited area 
uh, as I sit here in January of 2019. Um, it's the most audited um, aspect of CRA desk audits. And they're looking for people who have not kept a mileage log and they're disallowing virtually all of the expenses because people haven't kept these mileage logs. Again, here comes technology to the rescue. QuickBooks Online, if you're using that, has built into it a mileage tracker. You simply get in your car, you drive to where you want to go, you get out your phone and you say this was business or this was personal, and it's kept track of all the mileage for you without you having to keep those detailed mileage logs, which so few business owners have kept. Um, now what goes into the actual expenses? You've got repairs, <clears throat> license and registration fees, insurance, um, leasing costs if you are leasing or amortization if you own the vehicle. <clears throat> Again, we could do a whole different session on amortization. We've got a great blog post out there right now on uh, amortization of electric vehicles because there have been some changes to the amortization rates. There are different amortization rates for different types of vehicles. Um, again, we can literally have a whole webinar dedicated to amortization. Um, so if you're not sure what you can deduct and what you can't, ask your account manager and we'll help you figure that out for you. Um, in addition, if you are a small business owner um, and you're deducting your personal vehicle, there's typically a percentage of use for business and a percentage of use for personal. The easiest way to calculate that is you take the kilometers that you drove for business you divide that by your total kilometers that you drove, that gives you a percentage. You multiply that percentage by all of your expenses to figure out uh, your prorated expense deduction for automobile. Um, bank charges, um, so all the bank charges from your bank statements, uh, things like cost of printing checks, brokerage fees. Um, in addition, if you have a corporate credit card and there's a um, fee for that corporate credit card or going to your bank charges. Uh, sometimes if you've got investment accounts, there might be charges there for trades that might fall under bank charges as well. Um, and you'd be surprised at what some of those can add up to. And, you know, by identifying them and looking at them, you quickly realize, you know, choosing one bank over another has some substantial advantages. Um, books and periodicals is an often underutilized category. Um, these can be books, eBooks, magazines, <clears throat> Audible books, um, Kindles, all of that, newspapers, videos, it's all deductible. Uh, oftentimes people think it has to be specific to their niche or their industry. Um, generally speaking, it all goes to your body of knowledge. Uh, again, caveat, speak to your, your professional accountant to make sure that uh, your deductions or your, your newspapers, magazines, subscriptions are legitimately deductible. But in most cases, virtually every dollar that you're spending on books and newspapers um, and periodicals, if you're doing them, um, are all legitimately deductible. Um, going back and forth here. Uh, business promotion. Um, so this is the opposite side of that advertising expense that we talked about. So business, expo business promotion is for business meals and entertainment. It includes the cost of food or drink if you're entertaining clients. It can also include entertaining clients at your home, which might include groceries. Again, we really wanna be clear on documentation when we're doing this. It's an often underutilized and missed deduction is entertaining in the home. Um, and if you are entertaining in the home, you really wanna show that uh, transparency of look, normally we're spending 200 bucks uh, a week and this week we spent 400 bucks a week because we went out and bought take steaks and you know wine and, and we were entertaining in the home uh, and so we want to uh, deduct this because it's related to our business. Uh, it could be tickets to sporting events if you're taking someone out to watch a game as a way of uh, promoting your business, networking, building relationships um, and as a small business owner you know virtually your entire life is networking and relationship building. We know, you know, if anyone who watches Gary Vee knows, you don't turn your business off at night. Um, you are constantly thinking about, working on, and talking about your business. So virtually all aspects of your life have the potential to be deductible because I'm sure that virtually everyone that you're talking to has the ability to help your business, whether that's from, you know, your wife, who's your greatest coach and mentor and uh, financial advisor, or your, or your husband, or I should say your partner, I guess. 
Because let's face it, most people do not make financial decisions without their spouse and their partner. So we're going out and having a meal with them to discuss business opportunities, strategy, um, what's going on over the course of the last year, the last quarter, the last month. Um, you know, this is legitimate business use of business promotion. And recognize that CRA is going to uh, add back about 50% of the deduction. They recognize that you are getting some benefit in this. Um, so we want to be careful of understanding what goes here versus advertising. Um, but there's a lot of opportunity here under business promotion. The one thing I will tell you is, is the often um, misunderstood thing about business promotion or meals and entertainment is that just because you spent money on a meal, that makes it deductible. The, the key here is that you're spending it with someone else um, who has the business, the potential to help your business. Um, going out and having a meal by yourself, even if it's at an end client site, um, does not count unless you have traveled more than a certain number of kilometers, which I'm not going to state in this video because it can change. Um, but there is, and again, ask your accountant, after, if you're going more than a certain number of kilometers, then you can call this meals while traveling, still subject to the 50% deductibility, but this can be a meal that you pay for just for yourself as opposed to having to meet that criteria of having a meal with somebody else. Um, computer lease expense and computer supplies expense. Um, so this is pretty straightforward. Uh, I don't know how many people actually lease computers anymore because um, they're relatively affordable and with the advent of cloud servers, um, you know, you might be paying a monthly uh, hosting fee more likely or a subscription fee than you are a lease. Um, those are going to be all deductible. Um, if you are purchasing computer hardware, um, that is a asset that does have to be depreciated. We'll talk about that again in a second. But if you are on a lease, if you're picking up supplies for your computer, usually we use around threshold of about $200 because what's a supply? What's an actual computer? And P.S., if you're using a bunch of supplies to build a computer, that's actually considered a computer, not supplies. Uh, some caveats to that. Um, but, uh, you know, generally speaking, you're able to deduct a large percentage of uh, your computer supplies, mice, keyboards, printers, all of that. Um, and so <laughs> some of the areas we haven't covered before, uh, hardware and software items, we're using here as a threshold of $400. And that's again, because we specialize in small businesses. If we were dealing, as you can imagine, with a company like Shoppers Drug Mart, Canadian Tire, they would not use $400 as their sort of threshold. They would use a much higher number. This is not defined by the Income Tax Act. It's a reasonable guideline that we use for small businesses. Um, generally speaking, our perspective is under $400. It's probably disposable. You can have things like monitors, printer ribbon or printer toner, uh, paper, computer repairs, um, hard drives, USB drives, uh, keyboards, mice, you know, all of those things can fall under computer supplies. Consulting fees expense. So if you're doing any subcontracting, uh, more and more, we've got people using tools like Fiverr and stuff like that. Uh, you don't necessarily have to work with Canadians. Um, you can be working with people internationally. Um, you have no obligation to pay any taxes for any consultants. The one thing that I would argue here is uh, understanding whether the person truly is a consultant um, rather than an employee. You know, we're the experts on uh, personal service business and the misclassification of employees versus uh, independent contractors. You know, the same can apply to your business. You want to make sure that if you are paying someone as a consultant, that they will be deemed to be a consultant and not potentially an employee because there could be risk for your company. Uh, again, oftentimes this is used as an income splitting tool for doing tax planning with family members as well. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, but consulting are another common area of deductions for most small business owners. Um, amortization expense, here's a couple of key areas. So you've got automobile, uh, computer hardware, computer software, furniture, office equipment. There are some other categories. Um, these are the depreciation rates. Again, if we're your accounting firm, we're gonna calculate all this for you so you don't need to stress about it. Um, but what this basically means is that you are not deducting 100% of the expense in the current year. When you have an asset, it's considered to have a lifetime value that extends beyond the current fiscal year, 
which means that you only get to deduct a portion of that this year, another portion next year. And we typically use declining balances here in Canada. Uh, so for example, the automobile, it's 15% in the first year, 30% of the remaining value in each subsequent year, which effectively means it never really falls off the table until you dispose of it um, or you, know, you get down to a few dollars and it's immaterial and you write it off. Um, again, amortizations can be a little bit confusing, a little bit um, complex. We probably are gonna do a whole session dedicated just to amortization. But bottom line here, folks, is we take care of that for you. Uh, so if you're finding this confusing, overwhelming, don't worry about it. We'll handle it. We'll take care of it for you. Uh, education and seminars, again, another missed out opportunity. Uh, so any courses that you've taken, you know, seminars, online courses, professional development courses, professional coaching that you're receiving. Uh, and this is a great way also to legitimize travel. Um, so if you're looking to go down south for a holiday, if you can combine that with a seminar or a conference, uh, obviously the air travel to go down for the conference is legitimate. Uh, the hotel for the while you're there for the conference is legitimate. You know, if you're going to tack on a few more days, maybe the, the other additional days of the hotel uh, may be non-deductible, but you've got the large meat and potatoes of the expense as a deductible um, expense for the business. So this is a great way of combining, um, you know, different categories to maximize your deductions. There's also other things like investment opportunities as a way to look at networking, ways to, to legitimize travel. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that when we get to the travel expense. Um, employee benefits. Um, so if you are paying yourself a salary or if you have any employees, the CPP, the employer portion of the CPP is going to be um, deductible for you, as well as the EI um, and health tax if you uh, do have uh, traditional employees. Typically, if you're an owner manager, um, you're opting out of um, EI, uh, so it's not as applicable, but if you do have employees, that would be um, uh, deductible as an employee benefit, um, as are uh, things that you might do around um, uh, insurance uh, tools like health spending accounts um, or um, uh, um, IPPs, individual pension plans, um, which are a more aggressive tax planning strategy that can be used. Again, we can have, we have a whole nother session. We already do have another session on IPPs and what those are and how they can be used as an effective tax planning tool. Uh, but those would be all deductible under employee benefits. Uh, general expense is meant to be the catch-all um, for the small incidental expenses that don't really fit any other category. Um, if you're not really sure, you know it's deductible, but you're not really sure whether it should go here or there you might use the general expense category. It's really meant as a catch-all. It should not be uh, fairly significant. Um, insurance expenses, this is again quite common. You might have commercial insurance on buildings or equipment. You might have health and dental premiums, which are all 100% um, deductible. Um, now life insurance and disability insurance, uh, they're a little bit funny. Uh, disability, you can deduct disability insurance. Uh, but if you make a claim, the benefits become taxable. So most people opt not to deduct or claim their, um, their, their disability insurance. Now, life insurance is specifically disallowed, as I mentioned at the very beginning of this session. Uh, however, if you do set up the corporation as the beneficiary, um, any payments go into a capital dividend account, which can come out tax-free. Um, and in addition, um, because it's uh, the corporation is the beneficiary, even though it gets added back on the T2, which effectively means you're not able to deduct it, uh, because it's an add back, um, it, the money doesn't have to be taxed at your personal tax rate first. Um, it allows the corporation to pay for it as opposed to you, the individual, having to take that money in as either salary or dividend and then pay for the life insurance. So again, some specific ways that we can maximize these deductions as accountants. So if you're looking at insurance, do not buy insurance of any kind without having a conversation with your accountant before you do it. Um, and oftentimes as accountants, we can introduce you to insurance agents who are gonna have uh, potentially special discounts based on your industry, your niche. Um, so uh, I can tell you we've got accountants or we've got insurance providers that we can work with uh, that can help you maximize on things like uh, group benefits, um, 
health and dental, errors and emissions, all kinds of things like that. Uh, as well, the other thing to note is that insurance can be used as a really specific tax planning tool. Uh, and it's quite, quite complex, the different maneuvers that you can use with insurance. Um, we'll go into that in another session. But insurance can be used very, very, very creative, creatively to reduce tax. Um, interest and penalties expense. So interest paid on money borrowed to earn income, penalties or interest incurred on government remittances. Um, they're not deductible for tax purposes, but we do keep track of them. Um, so what happens is, again, these are like an add back. Uh, so they don't become personal income to you, um, but they, they are not deductible. They, they do get added back. Um, office supplies expense, things like printing, stationery, paper, postage and delivery, pens and pencils, um, you know, some office equipment that would be under $400, again, non-amortizable. Um, one of the things is, this is one of the areas we do actually find is, is declining. People are printing less, so they don't have as much cost in paper and toner. Um, you know, they're shipping less because everything's digital. Um, but if you still do have any costs related to any of these categories, um, they are legitimately deductible. Um, professional fees, this is a common area. It might be legal or professional fees paid uh, to assist you to earn income. It could be a fee to incorporate your business. It could be memberships in various professional uh, associations. Uh, lots of deductions that you might find under professional fees here. Um, rent expense. Um, or home office expenses, it's often referred to, uh, for our clients who typically don't have a physical location. Now, if you have a physical location or you're doing a WeWork um, or a Regis, of course, 100% of that is, is deductible. If you do have a home office, which is becoming more and more popular, then you're typically taking a percentage of your home expenses, a percentage of your heat, your hydro, your water, your mortgage interest, your home insurance, your property taxes, landscaping, repairs and maintenance, condo fees if you're in a condo, housekeeping, you know, uh, decorating, all of this. And then we take a percentage of that. We calculate the percentage similar to, to what we did with the automobile expenses. We want to figure out the office use um, and divide that by the total square footage uh, to get a percentage that we multiply all these expenses by. We've got a rather unique formula um, that it looks at um, not only your office space itself, but common areas like kitchens and hallways and bathrooms, um, and also um, things like garages uh, and parking. And when we incorporate those, we might take someone who's typically at five to 10% and get them up to 15 or 20 or even 25% of their home office. And you can imagine that, you know, people were paying 10, $15,000 in mortgage interest going from 10% to 20% uh, as a deduction makes a very, very significant difference in what they're gonna pay in, in taxes. I can tell you oftentimes that one adjustment in the home office expense will pay for our fees in and of itself by helping you maximize that one category in and of itself. Um, then we've got repairs and maintenance. Uh, now, you would typically have repairs and maintenance if it were for your home office. You would take a percentage of that. If it's for an actual office or you did it specifically to the office, then it goes under repairs and maintenance where we're taking 100% of it. Um, and, and these would not be, like I said, ones that would be included in as part of the auto or the home office expense. Telephone expense. Um, this is a, a really interesting one in this day and age where fewer and fewer people have a landline. Um, so de deducting, you know, cell phones and VoIP um, or anything over the internet like Skype, 100% um, deductible, no issues there whatsoever. Uh, where we do run into issues is with landlines. So there's a specific rule, as I said earlier, that your home office is specific or home telephone is specifically disallowed. Uh, now, if you do have, if you're still one of those people who have a traditional landline, it's just the base home line because that's considered a basic necessity. Um, long distance, call waiting, um, you know, any other features that you might have over and above the base telephone line is deductible. Again, one of the common things that we get here is that you've got these days telephone, cell phone, cable, all intermingled into one. 
um, and making sure you're you're actually removing out the portions that are not legitimately deductible, children's cell phones, um, cable potentially. Uh, could be deductible depending on your situation, but many times it's not. And of course that, that base landline if you are, um, if you do still have that landline. Uh, travel expenses we talked about earlier. Um, so obviously if you're going on any business trips, whether that's plane, um, trains, um, anything is gonna be deductible, including your hotels, your parking, your travel to and from the airport, uh, your meals while you're traveling, your Ubers, your Lyfts, and your Ubers and Lyfts throughout the year are also deductible under travel. As is 407, we usually put that under travel. As is parking, again, under travel. Again, this is taking those deductions and being able to maximize those and get 100% of them as opposed to the percentage of use that we would typically have under the automobile expenses. Um, so lots and lots of different things that you can deduct under travel. And again, speak with your accountant, um, but ways if you are looking to spend large amounts of money on a travel trip, let's look at what you can do while you're on this trip to find ways to make that legitimately deductible. Um, and the key here is documentation, 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 because if you go for a trip down to the Bahamas um, with you know, your, your aunt and your uncle, and you wanna claim that as business uh, expense, you better be able to show that there's a legitimate reason for why you spent the money um, to be able to help your business. And if you don't have that documentation and they see SunQuest Airlines or whatever the case might be, they're gonna assume it's personal until you can demonstrate that it's business related. Uh, wages and salaries, so if you have any employees, if you're doing any income splitting with uh, spouses um, or children, which is still a common area, I, I know there's a, a lot of information about there, uh, misinformation about income sprinkling and rules changing. Um, that's specific to dividends. Um, income splitting through the use of salaries is still a legitimate strategy. There are some specific rules around that. Um, and, and how we deal with that is really important. The actual flows of money are really important. The job descriptions, lots of things that are specific that need to be handled when you're doing income splitting with family members. If you have questions about it, again, talk to your accountant. They'll help you maximize that deduction and optimize the tax planning for you personally. And of course, if you have traditional employees, again, that's gonna be reported here. Um, the last category is non-deductible lifestyle expenses. This is, as it says, non-deductible, so it's, it's not something that you can actually write off uh, for your business. Um, here at CPA 4IT, we encourage our clients to keep track of the non-deductible expenses because it helps us give a holistic feel. One, it helps us to identify where you're actually spending your money. Because if we don't track your non-deductible lifestyle expenses, it just becomes a black hole. We know you've sucked this money out of the corporation, but we have no idea what you spent it on. And maybe there's some items that you, that you spent the money on that you thought were personal that could be deducted. So we tell our clients to keep track of everything, take pictures of everything. And in fact, under our non-deductible categories, we have some subcategories so you can track things under the key areas like rent and groceries uh, and clothing and entertainment. Uh, and this helps you to do a little bit of personal budgeting. Again, you know, we here at CPA 4IT are trying to help you um, to optimize your total net worth, not just your business. If we looked at only one aspect, uh, we'd really be missing out on helping you um, as an individual. And, and we specialize in small business owners. Um, we're not dealing with large multinational corporations. So it really is about you and your holistic plan for you as an entrepreneur. Um, so on that, that really comes down to, to how we optimize the tax planning. And again, that's a whole nother session. Um, you know, we want to look at, you know, small business deduction. Are we optimizing that? There are some in, in issues now if you've got passive income. Um, and, and how much passive year income you have and how it could be affecting your small business deduction. Um, we do look at income splitting and how we're gonna do that effectively. Can we still use dividends? Because you know there are potentially some options to continue to use dividends uh, despite the changes. Are, are we gonna use salary? What's the difference? What's the benefit? Can we use any form of tax-free loans, home loans, auto loans? 
Um, are dividends going to be an effective strategy, uh, whether that be a regular dividend, a capital dividend, um, which again is a really, really interesting tool. And lastly, how are we going to smooth all this income? Because anytime that we have two years of $100,000 of income because of the marginal tax system, you'll pay more money on a year of $200,000 of income than two years of 100. So we wanna smooth that income as much as we can. Um, and the more we can do that, the lower taxes you'll pay and the more money you'll have in your pocket at the end of the day. And that's the whole reason we're here is to help you keep more of that hard earned money. Um, now, now we're at the end of the, the scheduled session now, um, and I did want to make sure that you guys got this special offer. Um, and this special offer is for three months of Receipt Bank completely free of charge. Now, this is a tool that is really, really critical to making sure that you're maximizing those deductions. It's going to help you make sure you don't miss any deductions. It's going to help you keep deductions. If CRA ever comes auditing, you've got the documentation there that you can retrieve quickly and easily. Um, and you've got the information in, in a way that's simple and easy to do. So you're not, you know, just throwing things in a, in a shoebox and being like, oh, I'll deal with it at the end of the month. And you go at the end of the month and these receipts aren't, aren't, aren't legible because they do fade over time. The special paper that's used for most receipts these days will fade over time. So maybe it's not even legible by the time you go to do your bookkeeping. Or maybe it's legible when you do your bookkeeping, but when you get audited three years down the road, now it's not legible. And even though you had a legitimate expense, you can't prove you had that expense, so you lose the deduction. So we wanna prevent that from ever happening. So we're gonna give you this tool, three months completely free of charge, whether you retain us or not. All you have to do is book a free consultation with us, no obligations, no risk, and we'll give you three months of this tool completely free of charge. And of course, if you do choose to work with us, we give you this tool as long as you are a client of ours. So you can get this tool completely free of charge by becoming a client of ours. And if you don't choose to become a client of ours and you love the tool as much as I think you're going to, we're going to give you some discounted wholesale pricing on these tools as well. Just like I mentioned, we've got discounted wholesale pricing on QuickBooks Online. Uh, and again, if you're interested in that, book a free consultation, use the link below, book your free consultation, and we'll walk you through how to get the most out of being a self-employed individual. So thank you for sticking with me through this session. I hope it's been valuable. I hope it's going to help you maximize those expense deductions. And if you're not sure whether you can or cannot deduct something, give us a call and we'll help you figure it out. Bye for now.